Professor Dabo, thank you very much for this opportunity and welcome to the Chronicle. Thank you very much. Um, to start with, what is your assessment of the state of affairs in the Gambia today under President Adama Barrow? It's really uh, difficult to give uh, a specific answer to the entire situation, but I think uh, if we uh, divide this, I mean the state, I mean the country, or the uh, matters that there are intersections, then we may be able to indicate uh, how each of those matters stand. Mm. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, some progress has been made in the era of governance, democratization process. Uh, we've seen that the Human Rights Commission has been established and uh, all its members appointed and uh, is functional. Uh, we have uh, witnessed the reaction of this commission to some unguarded statements made by uh, state ministers in Brikama as to how uh, demonstrators will be dealt with. That gives us hope that uh, the Human Rights Commission will not be a toothless, bull, will not be a toothless bulldog. Yeah. It will certainly uh, be performing the function that is expected of it and uh, to keep uh, the executive um, on check so that uh, executive excesses uh, will certainly be curbed. Uh, of course, the Constitutional Review Commission is also on track. Uh, I hope that uh, in the next few months uh, the Commission will present its reports to the government and uh, at the same time publish, publish it for the general, for the consumption of the general public. Uh, uh, not much, I'm not quite satisfied with the progress made or being made on the security sector reform. Mm. I was chairman of uh, the security, the SSR, mm. and uh, quite frankly, I got frustrated uh, uh, in the way and manner uh, the matter was being, uh, I mean, was being handled, and uh, uh, I, That's when when you were in when, when when I was in government, mm. and, uh, uh, it's unusual for a chairman to really write to members of the committee urging them to come to a meeting. But I had to do that at one time because I was so frustrated that uh, the cooperation that I expected, uh, I wasn't getting that. And uh, there was a lot of food dragging. And I knew uh, when I was foreign minister, I knew that when we go for the uh, ECOWA summit, uh, the uh, not direct statements, but then you know you can infer from statements that were being made that uh, uh, the authority was not happy with the way uh, we are really approaching uh, or handling the security sector reform. Mm. So, so really, mm. that's an era, and I think, you know, it is very important that uh, uh, some very serious attention be given to this, uh, so that uh, uh, the ECOWAS community will not believe that uh, Gambia just wants to have economic mm. here, and that uh, yeah. would, would you attribute the, um, the the food dragging, as you said, to the fact that um, the authorities are comfortable with economic here and then they don't see the need for any security sector reform. Will that be part of it? Well, uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say that is part of it because I don't think uh, 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 the president thinks that way. And, uh, but I think, you know, there are some, and, you know this, we have can be an attitude of nonchalance, like a desical attitude towards things. I think that was basically the reason. Yeah, it's not, I don't. I don't. Think, I don't think it's because the uh, government felt uh, comfortable with economic. Mm. I mean, it's just that uh, you know. Um, for me, 
I don't think you know, some people are not owning up you know, to their responsibilities. How about the areas of um, transparency and accountability with the government? What is your assessment? Because a lot of people would um, criticize the government for not open enough, for not transparent enough, and for not even close to being accountable to the Gambian people, the way things have been going so far. Well, uh, I think these uh, perceptions and uh, of course some I mean, opinions too and uh, uh, it will be difficult for me to pinpoint any specific issue on which uh, government uh, has not been uh, has not been transparent although um, I, I must say that uh, when the last uh, supplementary appropriation bill uh, was brought to the national assembly i think the manner in which it was done uh, was much to be desired i mean uh, this a uh, government uh, you have need you know to uh, ask for funds to meet expenditures that we are not foreseen mm -hmm. and yet you know on an incurred you know uh, you don't have to wait until 1 a.m or thereabout you know and uh, have uh, uh, this matter been brought uh, to the national assembly you know i think uh, i believe that in future really we should gather in future we should guard against again against uh, against, uh, against uh, such a methods of dealing with matters mm. you know, how about if i may take you back to the issue of um the fleet of vehicles that were given to parliamentarians i mean up to today there's not been any official you know statement or official issue being made to say okay this vehicles were donated or were given to the Gambia or to the president by this. What we knew from this, I mean, the pre presidency from the government was that anonymous. It was given well, to well, the that, Gambia that, by anonymous. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that is certainly, uh, I, th I think it is regrettable. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, this was uh, the president's own explanation. And uh, of course, uh, uh, from that it does appear to me that it was certainly not uh, something uh, maybe donated to donated to government of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to draw a distinction mm -hmm. between president and government as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. But then uh, uh, certainly uh, such donations, I think, when uh, given to uh, whether to the state or to an individual, uh, the, the donors mm -hmm the philanthropist you know i mean should not remain anonymous mm. i think uh, uh, the the donor you know uh, the identity of the donor uh, should have been disclosed uh, what uh, what i find a little bit redeeming about it is that um, uh, the president didn't use them personally for his own personal use no to my knowledge no, did he uh, give it out for the use of members of his of his family or close friends and so forth? I mean, uh, uh, he gave it to an institution, the National Assembly, mm. for. But when he first gave it to them, it was his name. It was the president's name that was there until it was changed to National Assembly. No, no, no. That, this what this what I'm saying. That, that this what I'm saying. That you know. Even though it came in it, his, it came in his name, he didn't use them hoist for himself. No, did he use it for, for members of his family? When he gave it to the National Assembly, yeah, and uh, which is which is an I mean, an institution, one of the oversight institutions in the country, gave it to them, and that is what I find a little bit redeeming about it. But otherwise, if that not had happened. I mean, uh, I think I think mm. there will still be there will still be there will still be there will still be a lot of questions to be asked, right. a lot yeah. of questions to be asked. Yeah. Why did he receive it, and uh, is it uh, was it uh, the, this anonymous donor? Is he uh, in any way expecting to enter into any contractual relationship with the with the with the government and of the Gambia and so ask. forth? Why yes, would yes, yes. So, 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 really, so, really, so, 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 really, I think, I think, I think, with right. that one, right, you know, once. There's a willingness to accept the gift, 
you know, there should also be the willingness to disclose the identity of the donor. Mm. And personally, you took a lot of criticism for that. I mean, a lot of people say at the time you were in a position to at least come and challenge the presidency and the president as to who the donor or the, the donor was or the donors were. But then you kept quiet at least in public because your party um, had the numerical strength in the parliament and most of the recipients were from your party. Well, I don't, I don't think this is a number of uh, numerical test, numerical strength of the recipients, you know. I mean, uh, whether there was only one member of another party who received or not, you know, I think it's inconsequential, you know. I mean, uh, it was received by virtually all the members of the National Assembly, except a few. Except a few. You know, read, all the members received it. So, uh, why should Hussein Dabo? be criticized for it. Why aren't you saying that Hamad Ba? Why aren't you ask why aren't you saying that Ahmad Ba should be criticized? Why aren't you saying that OJ, then he was minister, why shouldn't he have been criticized for it? Why why Usain Daba was a person? What's the reason for that? And I think really uh, this is the uh, sort of uh, prejudice that uh, you know Usain Dabo has for several years been subjected to. Mm. People just have prejudice, they are prejudiced in their thinking about him, they are prejudiced, you know, in their beliefs about him. You know? For no other reason other than him being Usain Dabo and leader of the United Democratic Party. Mm. But but can't you at least understand this particular one? Because you fought all your life as a lawyer and as an opposition leader, the lack of transparency. And that is why I said that the redeeming, what I found redeeming about it is that the president they didn't use it for himself. He did not give it to members of his family. He gave it to a national institution. Mm. But would it, so, would and it that and that and that and that national and that, national, and yeah. that national institution, you know, obviously has, I mean, the the right, the power, and authority to raise questions about it mm. on the floor of the national assembly, and the president could then give an answer. So, if uh, uh, if uh, uh, really uh, there is no or that not nothing, you know, that I find personally that I find you know untoward about it, you know, why should I be criticised? That's but what. But that, thinking about that, it that, now, that's would what you I'm have saying. done anything different, especially with regards to questioning publicly where it, it came from? Is it, uh, if a you must understand that uh, when you are in government, in a minister, uh, a lot of things that you do are done behind the closed doors. You know? And uh, if, as a minister, I want to take an issue with the president, I have to resign from, from, I have to resign from government, and that's a decent thing to do. And I didn't find, at this particular issue, I didn't find anything in it that warranted or could have warranted my resignation mm -hmm. and then go on publicly I mean, question or attacking the president and making inferences or suggestions that I do not have anything to support that will support them. Because the conclusions that you would be wanting me to draw mm -hmm. is that you know he must have been involved in some corrupt practices and I do not have the evidence about that. You know, I can just go, I, can, I cannot go on, I mean, on a voyage of conjecture mm. and say this, this might have happened, this might have happened. I think I should be more responsible. I should not be, I should not be expected to do that. Mm -hmm. I should be more responsible. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let's move on, Mr. Davo. Um, so the government was formed, you were appointed foreign minister. Um, of course, for, for a long time, this is public, um, declared especially by the president. For a long time, you were the president's borough was your protege. You were his political godfather, you were a father. He openly, publicly, and proudly called you his political father. Everything was okay, and because of that, a lot of people said um, this was a UDP government. Then all of a sudden, we've seen problems started arising between you and President Barrow, um, where did things start getting to fall apart? Well, see, let, let me just 
to some uh, <laughs> correction. Mm. You know? I think it was erroneous that Reynolds believed that that was a UDP government. After all, how many cabinet ministers did you have? You had at least 20 cabinet ministers. Mm -hmm. And out of 20, only three UDP ministers. PPP had two, UD, two, PPP had two ministers. Why, would he, why didn't he say that it was a UDP PPP government? If it is the number of ministers in the cabinet mm -hmm. that impels you to conclude that this is UDP government. So I think you know, it, was, it was erroneous. And again, you know, some, that's also an indication of some, some prejudice against UDP. They wanted to see a lesser number of UDP ministers in the cabinet. And they couldn't have that. So the only thing they can do is you know, accuse Barrow of forming a UDP government, which was not true. Outside the cabinet, the ambassadorial positions, um, whose shot was that? Was that yours or President Barrow's? My recommendations and appointment by the president. Because it is he has the prerogative of appointing mm -hmm. Gambia's uh, representatives abroad. So I recommended, and, I, and, 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 and let me say that, that I have absolutely no regrets mm -hmm. in recommending the individuals that I recommended. They have been, uh, I mean, I, I think you're going to the question about their UDP. There have been allegations that they are UDP. And I said, what, how many? But, but they were, how, a lot of them were UDP. How, 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 and I said, look, how many, how many, how many of them are UDP? You know, Kemi Senjami, of course, there's no doubt that he was UDP. Femi Peters, of course, there was no doubt that he was UDP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, who else uh, that uh, carried the UDP flag, you know? And, uh, but then, you know, tell me, but you, you, uh, the gentleman in uh, Mauritania, I don't know. So the non-UDP I don't, members, I don't, I, were they also your recommendations? They were all my, I said all the ambassadorial appointments were my recommendations. Mm. Was there any recommendation you made with regards to ambassadorial appointment that the president rejected or the president didn't go by and ended up um, appointing somebody else or all your recommendations were accepted? No, there were only two ambassadors that I did not recommend and that was even before uh, I really settled in the Minister of, uh, in the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. you know. The current High Commissioner to India, I didn't recommend her. You know? the, uh, the, the former ambassador to Morocco. But other than that, I recommended all the ambassadors and the President never turned down any of my recommendations and I'm very grateful to that. Mm. But then that relationship started going sour gradually. Um, where did again, where did it um, all start going messy between you and the president? You see, my relationship with the president as far as the governmental operations were concerned never got messy at any time. As far as implementation of government programs and government policies are concerned, never went messy at any time. But personally, your yeah. personal relationship? Personal, rela personal relationship also never went messy. I don't, I, I have never had, even, even with my, <laughs> with, with the IGME, I've never had, I mean, uh, a hostile personal relationship with him. So I never had any uh, personal relationship with president that was sour, you know. The only thing that I believe was unacceptable to me mm -hmm. and probably also on my pronouncement or my reaction on unacceptable president is about the, with the youth movement. Yeah? We all believed that President Barrow was part of the UDP, he left the UDP for, for reasons that is not all Gambians. Mm. And we also expect also that, you know, at the end of his tenure, that he would come back to UDP. So if that is right, we saw no reason why there should be another youth movement, the UUDP youth movement, that he had been working with all the years, should be the one that should be strengthened. And I did not accept the Barrow Youth Movement. And, and I, you made that known I made, I, I, Of course, I made a public pronouncement mm -hmm. at the Congress. And I said that uh, any, youth, any organization that is embarking on any developmental program or they have a 
programs for development, I do not recognize them. But the National Development Plan of the government of the Gambia yeah, will push that, will support it at every level, at, at all cost. But development program by Baroid Movement, we will not accept it. We do not support it and we will never support it because we saw, I saw, and most of my colleagues and even political observers saw that, that look, this was really uh, an organization you know, that is meant to supplant you know, or the UDP youth movement. Mm. Or probably, as I said, later said that this was to be a political organization in the offing. And it has now become clear. Now they said that, look, the Barrow Fans Club is the political wing and the Barrow Youth Movement is the development of so That is what's problem. Mm. It's a question of principles. Yeah. I will not accept. Yeah. Whilst I'm leader of the United Democratic Party, I will not condone activity mm. by any individual who pretends to be a member of the United Democratic Party, yet undermining the United Democratic Party. I will not allow anybody to really embark on a mission that will disintegrate the United Democratic Party, and I continue to be in bed with you. That will be irresponsible of me. This feud between UDP and Baro, and the Baro Youth Movement, also hamper development and progress in the country. How would you react to that I think I, I, I think that is, that is absolutely wrong. That is absolutely wrong. After all, the UDP was not, you know, really, I mean, uh, running the government. I mean, how can the UDP, or, or my disagreement with President Barrow mm -hmm. on the Barrow Youth Movement and his desire to have the Barrow Youth Movement and the Barrow Fans Club flaws in this country, how would that affect? Is it still affecting the country? Has anything changed since I left government? Has anything changed? So it is, it is, it is absolutely incorrect that uh, uh, what you call the feud between UDP, Barrow and Barrow Youth Movement I mean, hamper the progress in the country. I don't think I don't think that is correct because when I was there, I never allowed the politics, the party politics, to affect my output, to affect my contributions in cabinet, to affect my responsibilities as far as the various I mean institutions that we are under. My, we are under the vice president. I never allowed it to, to, to happen. In fact. In fact, I have always stood out to say that, look, you know, we cannot allow politics, partisan politics, to affect the operation of government. I still want to go around the issue of your relationship and affecting the operations of the government. If the president and the vice president, they both believe strongly in what they believe in. Barrow believe in the Barrow Youth Movement. You believe that there was no need for it. And the feud was seen publicly. Everybody could see that this was in the relationship that was at the beginning. Even when you, you know, he was traveling, I think a few occasions he was traveling, you'll be at the airport to see him off. The handshake was completely different from what it was at the beginning. Some meetings you were sitting, you can see you have a few meters between you. It was obvious that well, something I, well, was I, well, How, well, how, I, I don't, how was never, it that, that I, it didn't I, affect? How I, could that not affect the operation of uh, the government? On, on, honestly, Mr. Bojang, you'll have to believe me that as far as I was concerned, it never affected me in my operation. I don't know about President Barrow, but it never, you know. I spoke to him freely on issues that concern government, and I spoke to him very honestly too. Very honestly and very sincerely. You know, and even on the security sector reform, you know, my last few days, you know, I spoke to him very sincerely and I suggested that there were some things that should be done. And his response, you didn't see anything no, that no, was and, unusual? And, and, he, and, he was, and, he was, and he was receptive. And he was certainly receptive. So, I mean, I think, you know, uh, that's my belief. I think both of us agree that, look, our politics, we'll put up our politics aside when we come to government matters. I think we all agree to that. Yes. So. And, and, and eventually he, he, he dismissed you, he terminated your service. Absolutely. Did you see that coming before the moment you were told officially that you were fired? Uh, for me, uh, 
the holding of a ministerial position is at the discretion of the president. You know? So it didn't surprise me, and it shouldn't surprise me. Why? You know? Because you know that he has a discretion. You know? And of course, you know, come and, and of course, quite frankly, uh, the uh, I personally the, the, the comfort the comfort I would have I would the, the comfort you know uh, I was having you know uh, certainly uh, suddenly started dwindling, but you know I wanted to resign when I came from Yerevan in October. When I went to the uh, Francophone La Francophone, when I came back, I was going to resign. But the senior executive of the United Democratic Party put a lot of pressure on me that no. I should not resign. Mm -hmm. Why would you have resigned? Why did you contemplate resigning at that time? Why I contemplated resigning was that, look, you know, I wanted to be free to do the politics, to, UD, to, do, to do UDP politics. I wanted to be free to do UDP politics because as a minister, yeah, you are constrained in, some, in, in, in several ways. You know, in times of time, you know, and even uh, in your, if I may use the word quote unquote, your ability to react or to respond to certain situations or to make certain suggestions, you are constrained you know, by the code of conduct that binds you as a cabinet minister. Mm. So, so certainly. Certainly I, wanted, I, I certainly wanted to resign. Mm. And did he give you any reason officially no, no. why you were fired? No, he never. Mm. He did never. he speak to you about it or he sent he never, he, ne he never, he never, he never. Well, he sent, uh, he sent, uh, uh, he sent the Secretary General, Mr. Kamara, uh, Mr. James Gomez, Honorable James Gomez, and uh, uh, Honorable, well, not Honorable, uh, the government spokesperson. To deliver the letter <laughs> in your house? No, no, in my office. At your office. In my office. You know, to deliver the letter in my office. What did the letter say? That uh, the president has in exercised in his powers, I think, under section 70 of the constitution, decided to leave my cabinet, please, my cabinet appointment, and thanked me for serving his government. Mm -hmm. And I responded that I was grateful for having been given the opportunity to serve my country. This, the same Friday. Yeah. No, no. Well, the Monday. Monday. The Monday. I, I delivered it on Monday, yeah. mm. and that is it. Mm. 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 And you, the since then, you've not had any word with the, with President Barrow. No, since since, uh, since then, since then, I've not had any word with him, and because the occasion has not arisen, mm -hmm. maybe if the occasion arises, uh, uh, certainly. I mean, I have nothing personal against him, and I hope also he doesn't have anything personal against me. Mm. That's but by I your second, did you feel? Betrayed, disappointed. But as I said I wanted to resign. So if I'm given, <laughs> if I'm mm. if, if I'm put that, so I, I I would feel relieved. So there was no question of being betrayed. I felt relieved. Mm. 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 And um, let's look at um, the issue of, like a lot of people would say, morality and legality. The president, the coalition, agreeing to a three-year term for the president and the constitution saying five years. The debate was always there. A lot of people were talking, people were divided, country was divided. And then you came publicly. You said anybody who wants to push, not direct quote, but something like anybody who wants to push the president to leave by the end of the three year term, you, you threatened to take legal actions against, against them. Well, yeah, I mean, that was a, a very forceful way of stating the position uh, supported by the constitution. That was just a first way of saying it. Mm. I mean, certainly, uh, that's how I saw it, that the constitution provides that the president is elected for a term of five years, and that, uh, of course, you know, before the expiry of that term, you know, I thought that, you know, you know, you know it will not be in tune with the constitution mm -hmm. to force him to leave. Of course, he could resign. Of course, he could resign. But then when he resigns, what happens? It was that within the contemplation of the negotiators, because I'm told that I was in there, so I should have less to say. Is this still your opinion 
um, that President Barrow must and should not be forced to leave after serving three years. If he voluntarily resigned, he no, no, if he voluntarily resigns, I mean, that is, who, who, why should anybody stop him? Look, if he doesn't have to wait up to the end of the three years, he could resign even right now. But if he doesn't, he should go and serve the five full five well, years. Well, uh, that's what that's what that's what I think that what the constitution pre prescribes for. That's the constitutional prescription. But as president, don't you think moral and moral issues are also important? If you and that should be and that should be that question should be put to the president, mm -hmm. not to me. When you made that um, statement, your party supporters months later said um, that was your personal opinion Absolutely. and it's not the opinion of the party. Absolutely. What is the opinion of the party? No, the, the, part, the, the, the party's opinion will be, known, will be made known very soon. And in fact, uh, it is not only my supporters, supporters of my party, but also some other individuals who are non-UDP members who have I mean, a way of caricaturing me anyway, mm. saying, like, look, you never voted in 2016. So you have nothing to say whether or not President Barrow should be in office for three years or for more, or for more than three years. Mm. It so is we, the electorates, we who voted, we are the ones who are taking him on, on his promise. Mm. And it is not your business, and uh, you have absolutely no authority because you did not vote so is it that the party has not reached UDP has not reached an agreement a decision on the issue of three years or five years or they have and then it will be premature for you to tell me no here. it is that, that the UDP has not convened a meeting to discuss three or five years but it will uh, of course what? on an important issue as important as this hmm. it will Mm -hmm. But what if the party's decision differs from your initial statement, your initial pronouncement? Well, <laughs> uh, I think President Barrow himself knows that I, it was part of our executive that I never go against the decision of the party. Mm. I might find it distasteful, I might disagree with it. Mm. But that decision of the party, and uh, if I'm not comfortable with it, if I'm not happy with it, maybe the best thing to do is to resign from the party. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't go against the decision of the party. What would you tell the three years Jotna movement that wants to quote unquote force the president out in three years? No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it is, it is uh, time for me to say anything because already. Uh, people are saying that you know you made a statement that was personal. Now I don't want to make another statement that anybody would think that look this is personal. Do you regret making that statement? Would you have done it again? Look, look, if if I say so, then I'd be a very dishonest lawyer. Mm. If I say look, you know that statement I made, you know, is not correct. I regret it. Then I will be very dishonest because I I just I, I just stated what the law stated. And if I said that is that to get said that what how, how would how, you would lose respect for me? Mm -hmm. But what would you say to criticism or or suggestion assumptions that you made that statement because you were best bait fellows with President Barrow, and you yeah you I have yeah. it's not it's not a question of being best uh, best uh, bait fellows with President Barrow, as uh, in my view, best bait fellow with the Constitution. And so you wouldn't um, mind even today telling people who wants to use that three-year agreement by the coalition to tell them that you are violating the constitution. If the president doesn't resign, he should go and serve the five-year mandate. Well, I have stated my views, and that has not changed. And, and as, I, as I said, you know, it will be extremely dishonest of me. And in fact, when people will lose respect for me if I start saying something different. Mm. And uh, one thing that I really want to have is uh, I don't want anybody to say, what well, ahead. Mm. Would you accept that that might limit your position in any future debate on this issue of three years or five years? Well, you say the, debate, the, the, debate, the debate, the debate, unless you want to engage me personally as an individual. Mm. 
But is it uh, the party's position as said, the party will convene, and of course, whatever position the party adopts, you know, and I think you can defend that. Mm. I'll be able to defend that. Mm. Yeah. Whatever mm. position the party adopts, I think I'll be able to defend that. Mm. And a lot of people say yeah, that because of that statement and your threat to take people to court, um, that emboldened President Barrow to come out and then eventually say whether you like it or not, I'm here five years. Well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's really emboldened uh, President Barrow. When was that statement made? Where did I make that statement? That was made post September 2017. It was made post September 2017. And in September 2017, the Barrow Youth Movement was launched. So, anybody who is there reading on the political uh, I mean, the landscape, mm -hmm. knowing, having, having a little bit of experience, you could foresee what was, forthcom what was forthcoming. So, it's not a question of really uh, <coughs> uh, emboldening him. Already, steps have been taken. After all, in December of 2017, we saw T-shirts all over celebrating the one-year the one year victory of the coalition. We saw T-shirts all over. You know? So it's not what I said emboldened him. You know? It was, for me, it was working gradually towards the realization of his objective. Mm. And of course... And the objective is to stay on, to cl cling on to, to power? Well, well I, I, absolutely. 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 Mm. And, and, of in course, and of course... September 2017, still you were one of the most important people, you know, around Barrow, in terms of government, not personally, but in terms of government. Well, in terms place. of government, yes. Yes, I was yeah. foreign minister. Yeah. So if you come out at that time to say that I will take anybody to court no, who no, wants no, to do no, no. that, that what, no, what, what, the president's what, 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 to power. What I'm saying is that, that you know, the move, mm -hmm. because he never bold, emboldened the move for this, you know, really, you know, happened or started, you know, even before September 2017 when the Baro Youth Movement was formally launched at uh, uh, Semegajani Hall. You have the numerical strength in the parliament, UDP, but since the beginning of this parliament we've not seen, despite the fight, UDP's fight for more than two decades against dictatorship and all you wanted to put in place in terms of legislations, <laughs> we've not seen a single private member bill put on the table, sponsored by the UDP. What explains this? Well, uh, you know, the, uh, the coalition government you know, has a legislative program. And uh, uh, we believe that uh, government should be given an opportunity to implement those legislative programs, which will be in fulfillment of the promises made to the electorates that when you come, we are going to address the specific issues through the National Assembly. Yeah. After, after all, uh, the, uh, legis the exercise of legislative functions of National Assembly is quite important. Mm. But it's not the only function. You have other functions which the UDP National Assembly members are efficiently you know, performing and uh, uh, with conscience. Yeah? But uh, 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 maybe, 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 uh, maybe it will not be right for me to tell you what some members have been telling me recently. And, uh, uh, but then you know, there are certain issues that we think, you know, uh, legislation should be passed, uh, legislation should be presented on, but we believe that that government should really take the lead in that. We don't want to leave it to private, to, to private, to, to private members. And you know, it's, I mean, it is not because you have uh, 
15 National Assembly members. Yeah, because um, UDP members are not, are not the only legislators. Well, and how are you are not asking the, the, the GDC? Well, you're not I'm, asking. I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, you interviewed me, but I, 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 I think really it should be a general, because, uh, because really, because uh, the, for me the question, what the question it is, I mean, thing seems to suggest is that, no, it is you who should do it, it is you who should do it, you know, that's what I say, but what, what about GDC, what about NRP, what about DOI, mm -hmm. you know, so forth, but, but quite frankly, there are issues that we think about very seriously, and uh, I very, I think, uh, maybe very soon, uh, they would have, I mean, would have a draft bill on some aspects of some on some laws. But we thought that that government should take the lead in that. When next elections are held, UDP contest is Hussein Dabo likely going to be the flag bearer of the party? I think UDP members should be asked that question. You know, I don't select myself. Do you still have presidential ambition? Well, if I say I don't have presidential ambitions. I'll be deceiving, but I'm not desperate to be president. That is one thing. I'm not desperate to be president of this country. What do you say to suggestions that you should step back, put a younger generation in front, and be there as advisor instead absolutely. of yourself going absolutely. forward? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Let the younger generation come forward and ask to be selected as the flag bearer. Do you see yourself as, the, as a unifier in this country at a time when the, we are so divided as a nation based on political lines, sometimes based on regional tribal lines, because a lot of people also say, or some people say, they don't see you as a unifier, the unifying factor who's going to put the country together. Well, again, again, that is, that, again, that is the prejudiced minds. What have they found divisive about me or about my party? You see, uh, Mr. Bojam, you have individuals who idealize other people. And those people are not able to make it on the political in the country because Hussein Dabo is the obstacle. So they go on and demonize Hussein Dabo that he has no ability to unify people, that he is divisive. And no one will tell you what the divisive uh, actions or divisive statements I have made. I've all as asked for the unity of this country. I have always advanced the argument that a Gambia without Jola is not, it's, it's not a Gambia. A Gambia without Wallops is not a Gambia. It is the total, the aggregate of the ethnic groups that make up, that make the Gambia what it is. And no one can really segregate this, the, I, mean, I mean, these ethnic groups. I, 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 I cannot, I cannot understand why anybody will say that we do not define, we are not unified, we are not unified. Of course, we will push our political agenda against the political agenda of others. And we do so very aggressively. And uh, if they think that is divisive, then so be it. We do not regret that. Because it's happening in other parts. Others are doing it. And yet they don't say that they are, they are being divisive. Will UDP form the next government? Absolutely, yes. There's absolutely no doubt about that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Why are you so sure? Because of the gains that we are making. Because of the gains we are making. You know? I mean the Even when the new constitution comes you see, into you see, play and the 51% we, we, mark. We, we, uh, we have taxed ourselves to go beyond 51% on the first round. That is what we have tasked ourselves to. And that is what we are working on. If that doesn't happen, you will need other parties. Well, yeah, if it doesn't happen, we will need other parties, of course. But, you know, but we are working on that so that 
there would be need to have another coalition government doesn't arise. Mm. It's a possibility that it can that, that we may not. And but but we are, that, that is what we have to that is what mm. we have tasked ourselves. Mm. And, and that's and, what, and, and, some, and some that's our You're causing up with the GDC and Mama Kande of late. Is that likely? I don't, I don't, I don't know what they mean by causing up with GDC and Mama. UDP and, Mama, UDP and GDC had never had a discussion of any nature that would bring the two parties together. Look, we are we are leaders. Should we be hostile to each other? We meet in a public. I don't want to talk to Mama Kande. He doesn't want to talk to me. Would that be an example that should be set in for the nation? If anybody thinks that, that, we are, that because of that we are cozy, then I say, well, we will continue to be cozy. We should be able to debate on issues and not attack personalities. I think that's what we should be able to do. But if, if because um, I meet with Mama Kanda and then we shake hands, we take photos and people think that there's something, well, okay, let them go. <laughs> Nothing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nothing their beliefs. You're welcome. You're welcome.